because it verifies, for intelligent beings, it verifies what kind of a spirit can enter into that being at the earliest spark of life. Each creature after its own kind. So that when the sperm of a dog meets ovum of a dog, the life of a dog is formed at the first spark of life, the spirit of a dog, whatever that means. Not necessarily even that they have a soul, but the spirit of a dog enters that zygote, and that embryo grows and develops, and it becomes a dog in spirit and in form. The spirit of a man does not enter into it. The spirit of a horse does not enter into it. In the same way that a man is not born with the spirit of a horse or the spirit of a cow. And the point is, this was problematic to the watchers, who, according to all these ancient records, had participated with God in creation. They knew something about creation, or at least they knew something about genetic manufacturing. And uh, they wanted to leave their plane of existence and enter this three-dimensional reality. They, they, like I said earlier, they could have descended on Horeb in the days of Jared. They could have possessed a dog. They could have possessed a man. They didn't want to do that. They wanted to, they wanted to replace that innate spirit, which God had created and set into procreative motion, dating back to Him, and who also set barriers between these species, and commanded that each kind would reproduce after its own kind. Now, uh, I, I mentioned earlier that for some time I had been an exorcist. Mm-hmm. And, there's, and there was one thing that I learned during that time that later on came back to me when I was doing this research. And that is that while we might be able to cast a demonic spirit, an alien spirit, out of a person, uh, the one thing we can never do is cast that person's innate spirit out of them. Hmm. In other words, you are you until the day that you die. Sure. Neither could the watchers replace the spirit of a man or a beast in that way. They could possess them, but they couldn't replace their spirit. They couldn't so supplant wa- it. What's that? They couldn't su- totally supplant it. That's right. They could not expunge the spirit of any intelligent being mm-hmm. with their own spirit. Um, so now, but but these beings knew something about creation, transgenics, the blending of DNA, one species from another, because they had participated in creation. And here was the great sin. They knew that the key to solving their problem, leaving their plane of existence and entering into our existence, that, that to do that, to incarnate themselves, not just possess, but become embodied on Earth, to leave their plane of existence, they were going to have to do several things that were all Luciferian. Number one, they were going to have to break the law of God by breaching the species barrier. Secondly, they were going to have to create a blended being, which would not allow the spirit of a man or a beast to enter it because it would be neither man nor beast. And thirdly, they would have to leave their estate and in a mockery of what God had done, breathe of themselves into this mutation, this Nephilim, and and ultimately accept the judgment of God. And according to the ancient text, all of the ancient texts, this is what they did. And, and these records tell us that it led to this unique being, part human, part animal, part angel. Uh, this was a being that might have also then, and it would be interesting at some point to talk with you about transhumanism, because most people may not even be aware of this term, but I can, t- I can assure you that the John Templeton Foundation... Uh, Case Law School in Cleveland, Stanford University, Oxford University, uh, Birkbeck Law School out of the United Kingdom, that there are intellectuals and people who are constitutional attorneys who right now are making the case for transhumanism. And this is, and unless the Lord intervenes, this is not something that's going to be stopped. Uh, these people are most definitely sincere about their interest in being a transhumanist and ultimately a posthuman, using biotechnology as the next step in human evolution. Now, they expect yeah. those type of people to be intermixed amongst us, sort of a homo superior type of breed, within the next few years, correct? Well, within, within, within 10 years. I mean, really, the, the groundwork for it is being done right now. Look, we're already blending humans and animals. And if you, if you go to... Um, 
Uh, Nick Mostrom is, has his prestigious seat at Oxford University was earned by his thesis on transhumanism. If you go to nickmostrom.com and read his thesis on transhumanism, uh, you can go to Dr. Uh, James Hughes, uh, Chain Surfer, uh, uh, website. I can't remember the, the name of the website exactly. I've debated actually Dr. Hughes on his own syndicated radio show. Mm. He's the executive director for the Institute for Ethics and Emerging Technologies. He's a bioethicist and a sociologist. He teaches at Trinity College in Hartford and uh, sits on boards at Yale University. These people are dead serious about what they're doing. And President Bush, when President Bush two years ago came out, <coughs> Excuse me, and called for legislation that would um, that would outlaw federal funding for the creating of human animal chimeras here in the United States. This was about two years ago. Um, people may remember the reason that he did that was because his own Council on Bioethics, which at that time was headed by Leon Cass, um, they had researched all of the material and they had looked at, at, at what all of the um, uh, lawyers and constitutional attorneys were telling them, and they determined that this really is go this is not only going to occur, but Leon Cass and Francis Fukuyama and others came out of that and wrote books in which they said we are now standing on the threshold of the most dangerous science in the history of mankind. And and Leon Cass, who is a conservative and a Christian, was the chairman for that board, and he said. He told he told uh, the president, and later in his own book, he said, uh, "We're we are right now uh, entering into a time in science where we are going to redefine what it means to be an animal, what it means to be a human." And then he said something scary. He said, "What it means to become a superhuman, or what it even means to become a god." And he said those words, even though he's a conservative and a Christian, because he understands the ramifications of what we are doing now in, in the creation of a science that will allow for the modification of what it means to be humans. And, and I, you know, my research looked at this saying, okay, well, if, if humans begin blending themselves with animals, which they are poised, even National Geographic said that this is the last decade. National Geographic did a huge article on this in which they said in less than 10 years now, in less than one decade, Mankind will no longer be the sole higher intelligent occupier of planet Earth. And they were talking about transhumanism. So we're talking about a science that's already out of the box. It is occurring. And it doesn't really matter if it occurs within five years or ten years or twenty years or two years. or It, it doesn't really matter what the time frame is as much as it is to say that the genie is out of the bottle now, mm -hmm. and we are doing this science, and we are paving the way for it. Even the U.S. military through DARPA has funded a great deal of research into human enhancement for super soldier technology and extended warfighter technology. Everything I'm saying can be verified by going to the by, by going to the sources. Um, for instance. The John Templeton Foundation that I mentioned earlier, they've already provided a half million dollars to Arizona State University. Anybody can Google this. They're, they're putting on right now a lecture series to evaluate the ramifications of embarking on what they have called lar the, the next step in human evolution, large-scale genetic and neurological re-engineering of ourselves a new chapter in evolution as a result of accelerating in, uh, uh, developments in the fields of genomics, uh, stem cell research, genetic enhancement, uh, germline engineering, a bunch of other things they list. You could also go and look up Case Law School in Cleveland. They received almost a million dollars, $773,000, from the National Institute of Health, actually, uh, to develop guidelines to use uh, and and, they, and and here's what's interesting. They're, they're actually using real human subjects for this, for this study in what they're calling the next frontier in medical technology, and that's genetic enhancement. And uh, the professor of law over there and bioethics is a man by the name of Max Melhelm, and he's leading a whole team of law professors, physicians, bioethicists. This is a two-year project, and, and their, their commission for receiving... $773,000 from the National Institute of Health. Their commission is to establish the guidelines. This is from the, this is from their press release. 
established the guidelines for altering the human species through genetic enhancement, end quote. That's their, that's their objective. Yeah, they're not veiling that Whoa. at all, are they? You know, you've not even mentioned this whole other concept of uh, uh, cyborgs, where we have other groups that are trying to enhance our capability with electronics and other kind of means to create uh, a, a blurring between machine and man, where we can enhance our memory and our capabilities, uh, uh, our analysis capabilities, and where they even foresee one day where they can download all of our memory and other things and transplant them in another uh, type of cloned individual, which would be sort of a pseudo-immortality. So the, right. the sky's the limit on, on what they're trying to do. I want to ask you one other as we're, we're, we're coming here to the, the, the last uh, uh, quartile of our show here. And this is uh, not that we've not been strange enough already in this topic, but even stranger <laughs> topic. And, and this is one that I want to make sure my listeners understand. If this is too far out for you, uh, what we're talking about right now is not predicated on what I'm going to share right now. So don't throw out the baby with the bathwater here. But if we take it just one more step, uh, it's very uh, interesting that the Dead Sea Scrolls, uh, which actually had copies of the Book of Enoch and provided even further credibility that the ancients believe this general understanding, were found in 1947, which is a year which is well known uh, for the historic event of the Roswell uh, crash, which has captured the public's imagination ever since then and really birthed about the, the, the explosion in reported sightings of UFOs. And some of the data I have seen really blows my mind. I know there was a Gallup poll, a, a Christian pollster, the premier pollster, that actually reported that there were a few percent of people in the public who not only said that they have seen UFOs, but have actually had something like what we would say akin to an abduction uh, type of an event, which is just incredible. And that's why we hear so much about this. Wait, in the how news. many? I mean, it was it was something something ridiculous, like a like a two or three percent or something like really? that. Really, it was outrageous. Wow. Uh, Tom can can clarify this for me. But regardless of of the numbers, th this is something that's a much bigger topic than what the mainstream media lets on, and that's why it's so popular when you watch the History Channel or Discovery Channel or whatever. But but regardless of how many people it is, if there's anything to the reported sightings of these thousands of people who say they've had reproductive experiments with something. And up to now, many people have said, well, this, this is your classic UFOs from outer space. This sounds awfully like what you have talked about, what the ancients did. And I wonder if there could possibly be some connection between these genetic experiments and what people are reporting today. You know what's interesting? And, and I had not started out uh, to make any kind of connection between science and ancient history, but the connection came forth naturally. And I've often said to people, you know, um, if you were in a court of law and you had different um, eyewitnesses from different backgrounds, different cultural backgrounds, different ethnicities, different be religious beliefs, and all of them had witnessed an event, and each, but each one of them in their own way were kind of interpreting the event based on their own world of view, but essentially the facts of the event remained the same. If you had people from around the world telling you the same story, pretty soon you'd start saying, okay, there is, you know, setting aside their various ways of interpreting it within their own worldview, there really was something that occurred. And so when I was doing this study uh, um, using the scripture as my single authority, but noting how that in these other um, cultures around the world they were telling this same story, one thing that happened that I did not expect to happen took me over into the area of ufology. And, that, and, and here's how this happened, because I'm looking at, okay, these, these beings, these watchers, they came down. They wanted to harvest human DNA for the purposes of creating a body. Okay, that story was redundant over and over again. By bib, biblical, um, um, other texts referred to by prophets and writers in the Bible, and then other, script, uh, and other uh, ancient records outside of that. But, but then something strange happened. I started running across some of the writers who were writing about what was going on in ufology and alien abduction uh, the, in a sense that it was demonic. And what, what struck me as interesting was that some of the best secular researchers, the people who did not describe themselves as being religious at all, 
kept making the case that what was going on in alien abduction seemed to be identical to what had gone on in biblical demonology and in ancient demonology.